In our time of worship this morning, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. And so I invite you to pause so that you might gather together bread or crackers, juice or water or even wine, so that when that time comes, we might be able to celebrate virtual Holy Communion together. And so let us enter into worship together apart.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks to you for you are good and your love endures forever. We are not afraid in this uncertain time because you are always with us and you are our helper. It is better to take refuge in you than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in you than to trust in government. This morning, we declare the world that we rely only on you because you are our strength and our defense in times of trouble. Even though we are surrounded by troubles and walk through the darkest valley in our lives, help us rejoice always. Help us pray without ceasing. And help us be thankful in all circumstances. For we belong to Jesus Christ, and we all are children of God. Merciful God, remember those who risk their lives to help others during this uncertain time. Protect them and their families from coronavirus, and remind them that you are always with them. And also remind them that we pray for them day and night. Almighty God, Give our church members the strength and courage to face whatever life throws at them, knowing that they can trust in you. Dick Green, Gary Knowles, Bob Stackhouse, and other cancer patients put their hope in you because you know all things and you are not surprised by anything. Help them not to be terrified during this, during their chemotherapy and radiation treatment because you will never leave them nor forsake them. Help them to focus on you in this period of great suffering. I.W. Stevenson had a staph infection on his knee and had a surgery last Tuesday. While he's recovering from his surgery, protect him from any infection, and grant him complete healing. Remember church members in nursing homes, especially Bob Young, who is in rehab at Uplands Village, and Dennis McConnell, who is in rehab at Life Care, and Kathy McFarlane at Good Samaritan Society. I heard that they are making some progress in their rehab. Continue to send your healing and strength in their lives and give them your comfort yours to their spouse who have been separated from them. Be with Bob Seabrook, who was taken to ER due to gastrointestinal bleeding. We hope and pray that they will find out the cause of this bleeding and fix this problem. Be also with Melba Talbot, who has coronavirus and has been in ICU in Florida Hospital for a month. We pray for her this morning and send your grace and comfort and healing to her and her husband, Jim. With your help, she will be well. When darkness veils God's lovely face, we rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale, our anchor holds within the veil. Help us stand on Christ, the solid rock, and help us fix our eyes upon you, because all other ground is sinking sand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I hear this scripture, one of the first images that comes to mind is that classic Sunday school poster of Jesus with the lamb draped around his shoulders and the flock gathered close. We've all seen some form of that image, Jesus as the good shepherd tending the flock keeping them safe, offering a way for them to go into the makeshift pen for the night to be safe from predators. It's comforting to see Jesus as the good shepherd guarding us and watching over us. A second image that comes to mind is that of my daughter Leah. When she was at Auburn finishing her zoology degree, And she worked for the University Research Center and was in charge of the flock of Jacob sheep. I remember early one morning, she called me as she got to the field, and she very quietly said, Mama, listen. And she held the phone out away from her, and she called, Mariah, Bobby, Morty. And in just moments, I could hear the bleeding of a flock and the thundering of hooves as sheep came to their shepherd. It made me understand so much this scripture of hearing Jesus' voice and knowing it. She was kind of giggling when she brought the phone back to speak to me and to greet the sheep, and you could hear such joy in her voice, the kind of joy that Jesus has when he greets us. I learned a lot about sheep those years that Lee attended that flock at Auburn. Sheep are vulnerable to everything. And so for me then to read this text several times since then, I know how vulnerable we are, how scared we can be if we do not have the Good Shepherd with us, watching over us, caring for us, protecting us. The greater depth for this text comes because Jesus was really trying to help the people here that the leaders at that time were not good shepherds. For centuries now, the Israel leaders had been known as not good shepherds, seen in the Old Testament texts as hurting the people. 
And so here we see this where Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd who lays himself down for the people. It's the expression of what God has done for us. It's the expression of who God wanted us to know him to be, the one willing to give himself up for us. Right now, we are in perhaps the most vulnerable time any of us have lived through. A time where we don't know who the enemy is because we can't see it. And we have to be wise as we go out and try to live some kind of life in public. But one of the things that we can be assured of is when we are at home, when we are out, when we are our most vulnerable, Jesus is with us, always, watching over us, guarding us, longing for us to see who he is and longing for us to know who God is as love, as grace, as mercy. And so as we move into a time of Holy Communion, And as we gather virtually, I invite you to feel yourself surrounded by the arms of the Good Shepherd. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to this his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, as a church, we ask your forgiveness for those times when we have not loved as you have loved us, when we have not welcomed the stranger or the neighbor as you have welcomed us. As individuals, we ask your forgiveness and patience for when we have not offered hospitality. And so let us pray silently. We confess there have been times when we have spoken only half-truths, when we close our own understanding from any side other than our own. Forgive us when we forget that together we are your family. And we are all called to think and care about one another as you have cared for us. Let us pray silently. As a church, we offer our prayers of confession for times when we have fallen short of your hopes or have simply not tried, when we have failed to see your vision. Forgive us when we have not trusted to be able to dream God-sized dreams. Let us pray silently. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And may the family say, glory to God, amen. Glory to God, amen. We lift up our hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. You walk with us now, during these days of uncertainty, and give us hope, even when all the world is in chaos. May the family say, God of power and might, Hosanna in the highest. God of power and might, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Good Shepherd, willing to give himself up for our sake. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, 
You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. And so may the family say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And may the family say, Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us be bold that we would pray together the prayer that Christ taught his disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you are a couple or a family, serve one another that you might share in this meal together. If you are a single person, you are not alone. God is with you. Feel God's love pour over you as you receive this gift of God's mercy, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. And now let us pray as we have received these elements of communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May we be for the world the living expressions of your love. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now may the God of all grace, who indeed is the good shepherd, walk with you now and always. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, sky of gold.